What's up YouTube? Today's video is going to be about a deck that is very well positioned in the current meta and counters a lot of the key cards and a lot of the other decks that are running around. It's going to be Zoe Vi, Targon PNZ. So some type of this archetype has been around pretty much forever. And one of its strengths that makes this archetype so consistent is that you have a lot of good options in deck building, a lot of cards that make sense to include, and therefore you can be flexible depending on the current needs, on the current threats that are running around in the meta. So looking at this list, this might look somewhat familiar. This is close to the, what was called the Ruben pile not too long ago, but it does have some different tech choices and I'll explain all of those to you because they are very, very effective. Let's start off at the very top. Triple Spacey Sketcher is very much needed right now for Equinox, which very effectively deals with powerhouses like Bandit City Mayor, especially Twinblade Revenant, stopping them from getting infinite lost souls. Then you have Nami Zoe, it hits Shelly or whatever card Nami buffed to infinity and a lot of other threats in other matchups. Uh, Crescent Strike is also always a great answer to something like Poppy or Lulu. Equinox also very good against the Lulu Z deck against uh, Young Witch, Fleet Feather Tracker, and so on and so on. To make sure we have enough discard synergy while at the same time not losing too much tempo, we run Triple Boom Baboon. Ballistic Bot also a great way to be flexible between either having more burn as a win condition or more discard fodder around. Poro Cannon, cheap blockers, lots of elusive in the meta, just makes sense for uh, mana management, for board management, additional damage if we need it. Now, Loping Telescope is one of the newer additions here and the card is just insane in this deck because of its flexibility. All of the low cost invokes are usually pretty useful, but you often do have the option to find some high value card in one of the two other options in the random epic or multi-region card. And therefore, we're very flexible to, to adapt to our current needs. This is also an additional way of finding us cards like Equinox or Crescent Strike that are super good in the current meta, as well as just finding any Celestial that we sometimes need if we pick one of the star shaping spells for which we need to behold another Celestial. This just gives us consistency on that um, conditionality of beholding a Celestial. Going further down this list, we have some interaction, of course, removal as well as burn, depending on what we currently need in the form of Mystic Shot. Get excited. Hush can be used both offensively or defensively. It can remove an elusive blocker if we attack so that something like a Suppressible can get a hit in or a Zoe or whatever. But of course, Hush is also a great answer to Zoe Nami, to Scion, in some situations to a shielded Lulu or Zed or uh, Poppy. Uh, Hush is just generally a very versatile, flexible card. Also can remove Twinblade Revenants, the last breath effect, and stop your opponent from getting infinite value. Aftershocks in there as a one-off just to have a bit more consistency in the landmark removal. Of course, we also have uh, Falling Comet from Solari Priestess and Supernova from Star Shaping that are able to remove your opponent's battle trees and so on, but just having something in the main deck, uh, not having to roll the right invokes the whole time also gives this deck a bit more consistency. And one of the more interesting techs in the current meta is Sunburst, because the card was never really played, it's kind of overcosted for what it does, but it just hits so many threats so well in this meta. Of course, we immediately think about Scion being silenced and removed immediately by Sunburst. Nami, we don't care anymore if our opponent puts a million Sunblast Vigors onto her, she still dies to the silence effect of Sunburst. And it also collaterally hits a lot of other cards. Again, Twinblade Revenant, silenced and removed. Poppy, can't be protected with sharp sides or barriers. Then we have Lulu, uh, Zed, Bandit City Mayor, Caitlyn, Draven, Vagar, Senna. There's a lot that gets hit by Sunburst. It's a bit pricey, but just a very reliable form of removal. And again, same idea as with Aftershock. Of course, Comet some, like, more or less does the same, but it's not very consistent to find. You also need to uh, play the Priestess first, often pick the Comet way in advance before you know you need it. 
Star shaping, uh, the obliterate is also conditional, very pricey. Therefore, it's good to have a sunburst in the main deck. Um, some people even consider playing a second one. I think it's fine at one. I don't mind a second one. Feel free to try it out if you like it. And yeah, that's it for the deck. I, I think I explained all of the cards already and their purpose. Therefore, the mulligan is very matchup specific. We generally look for early units for a bit of a curve and often want to keep Vi in the opening hand. And yeah, matchup specific removal. Sometimes you really want Aftershock, sometimes you really want Sunburst. Sometimes you can be greedy and keep those in the opening hand, but against aggro decks, of course, they're too slow. And then, of course, there is some matchup you just want to outvalue. And then in some uh, scenarios, it's even fine to keep a star shaping or in the mirror, keeping a star shaping to find a cosmic inspiration and therefore outvalue your opponent. This deck is super flexible. You need to keep an open mind depending on what deck you queue in. But it also is very rewarding to play, very interactive, has so much optionality and therefore if played well can win a lot of games in the current meta. So I hope this was helpful. I have a bunch of gameplay examples against all kinds of different meta decks here. If you need some inspiration, if you need some ideas on how to play this deck, feel free to watch them. Enjoy the video. Is it the Mustache? Who knows? Six five blocked seven attack. Wait 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 wait. Did my opponent miss pull? I didn't even pay attention anymore. I I was kind of done with the game when I realized if my opponent play like plays correctly, we can't win. Oh, he missed pulled. Okay. Then that that one's my bad. <laughs> How good is keeping dredger for three? It's not bad, right? I have three baboons, two ballistic bots, and three zoes. Create discard fodder. This we keep for the catalyzer for sure. Interesting matchup. I think this should be favored for our opponent. Quite the interesting pass there. Might get mini morphed. Anyway, we're up one mana this turn and got a 3 3 on board. Seems uh, fine to me. It's always kind of just fodder here for Vyfeast or Pokey Stick. Thinking about discarding Zoe and the Poro Cannon, to be honest, with the Dredgers, probably makes sense. The Dredgers stat line is so much more um, threatening to my opponent. Poros are just nice for getting suppressible rolling. I don't think that's that's worth it. That's interesting. That's a withering mist setup. So if I swing with these two, this blocks here and these two get misted. If I play Zoe, the withering mist gets way more awkward. Okay, more Vifees. It's fine. We're probably playing star shaping this turn, to be honest. 
I gotta play for value, I think. Otterpus. Bluff pale? I'm not sure if that works in, in diamond. Yo, Shiku, what's poppin'? Seven mana star shaping, god damn it. In this economy. Interesting. I don't think Cosmic is bad. We're very likely to find um, another Invoke very soon. Legends, of course, is a, an obviously good pick. A great beyond as well. All three are good. So my opponent's darkness is still mini. We saw one mini morph though. I feel like it's cosmic. It could be living legends. It's a bit tricky. But right now we have like two card draws coming up. The thing is against this you'd rather have a wide board that's scary than like single targets. Because single targets can just get um, mini morphed. Maybe if they play it stress defense. Okay, here's our invoke. We ha don't have mana to play it. So dredger first. Telescope first. I guess dredger can find Vi. So that's pokey stick most likely. Glow on Suppressible is kind of cute. On a 7 7 elusive. I'm not getting the Suppressible through right now, though. Some way to remove Vagor would be so sick here. Oh, Doggo is also very good. Okay, we have scary tempo, but our opponent can also... Like, is getting close to Vagor very quickly. The next darkness, next turn flips. I guess then I can hush afterwards, but... Serpented to get excited. Yo, Zapper, thank you for the 15 a month. Much appreciated. Uh, looks like a full swing to me. That's weird. Why would you not wait till next turn? For the level up. So if I hush now, he flips at end round. Does generate the darkness. Probably suppressible into Vi. Yeah, that looks good. Man, that cosmic pick is really paying off. sense. Hush? No, no, no. I want to play Vi and open attack. 
opponent can't really do anything that's scary to me right now. Except for mini more Vi. But wait, Vi would become a 5-5, five five, right? If she gets mini morphed at this point. Yo, Nick, what's poppin'? Hushing this is surely not worth it. I don't mind star shaping this. But I can also... I just have a lot of refill in my hand. This into this into whatever I draw. Meteors here is the deal more or less. Uh, I mean Comet. They're so easy to to mix up. Into Concede. We appreciate the target yet. We're working on it. Zoe Vi actually wins in the current meta. It's pretty decent. Retakes from Germany. Learned a lot from the YouTube guides and coaching sessions. I'm happy to hear it. Um, I suppose opponent will play Senna here. And I can hush mid combat. It's Tali. Sure thing. Can't resist. Through conflict, we grow. No, no. I understand. No. One star's Lipsy is another spark. I could have waited a bit. My opponent always plays darkness this round. I could have tried to keep that alive instead. I don't think it makes a difference realistically though. Even if this gets mini morphed, full swing in to get excited is lethal. A G, a G. Yeah, Zoe Vice does feel surprisingly good right now. Zoe Lee? Zoe Lee is a joke in this meta. Alright, let's see. This is a matchup we should be able to win on paper. You keep one get excited for Zoe or Draven. Uh, for Caitlyn or Draven. I'd like to look more for Equinoxes, but I guess... This hand also does uh, does stuff on its own. There we go. What do you think about BBG's missed lethal and worlds and LNZ Quebec sitting drama? I did not see it. And I did not hear about it yet. Drama? There's always drama in the LOR community. <laughs> nah, it's really not that bad. But to be fair, there was plenty of drama surrounding the world's qualifiers. And for a very good reason, though. Alright, remind me to watch it after this game. Have I seen Jason's post? I've seen it that he posted something. I didn't see the post itself yet because I was super busy today. Wait, his name is Rexar. 
Any Warcraft nerds in chat? Plenty of drama just in an A. Yeah, there was plenty of drama just in an A, but to be honest, the drama was global and for a good reason. Like, the other two shards also got got very, very uh, scuffed by Munklovai. I kind of like just sticking with the game plan, I think. Maybe I should have just, instead of playing Sketcher, played Star Shaping. I don't have a play for the rest of this turn. Probably the best jump block we get ever. Can I paint you? Only Dota nerds? Yeah, I, I mean, true, true. Beastmaster is also called Rex, sorry. Any artifact nerds in chat? That's the real question. What artifact? I I actually have a lot of hours played on artifact. Like a lot, a lot. Draft only. I think draft an artifact was amazing. Our opponent's hand seems scuffed as well. Oh, I could have... Oh, man. I need to start concentrating again. I need. I could have let this go through Star Shape my face. And ironically, I'm pretty sure it's Vrina. I also think uh, we discard get excited here. Or we just Star Shape. Yeah, let's not go for the sunk cost fallacy. Oh. Jackpot, baby. Man, cosmic into poro cannon is really unfair. I just wish I didn't throw the 1-1 one -one away for no reason. But I think we'll be fine here. Cosmic into Vrenna. 5 tan stat line coming down soon. Link strike. Alright, I get discard one, get excited, hit him for a lot of elusive damage. Get this value trade. Oh, this is really good. Hot on the trail. Hot on the trail. This card is really scary right now. Time for the money makers. Caitlin. I'm honestly considering blocking Caitlin because I only lose to burn at this point, right? Can I get outvalued here? Like some crazy tri-beam action? Trap RNG. Yeah, okay, let's let this go through. The other line would have been play Vi and get excited Caitlyn by discarding Sketcher, but I think I like this more. Whoop. Pop is perfect.
I agree that lobster is loud. <laughs> I'm not sure anymore about that after like the last logger Reddit uh, Twitter thread I posted. Because I I feel like some people might have misinterpreted it or like some people might have thought that was pointed at them when it wasn't necessarily. Yeah, the issue with those kinds of posts is, like, if you call people out um, on entitlement, the people that you want to reach with the message are the ones that usually don't feel spoken to. What post? Uh, just the last thread I posted on Twitter. That's an interesting one. Back in the Vimer days, this used to be super um, Vimer favorite. Never sump. I had one on board, if I recall correctly. Well, the suppressor version sucks. I'm F and I basically already lost. I could still find Vi. Hmm. Equinox suppressor. Yikes. Wait, I can pass, and if opponent swings with MF, I can pay a cascade. I'll do my best. What mate? I mean, I think it's the moon server. Hoping we ever get rid of this. Because the other two are entirely useless. Pick Serpent, it makes uh, Mystic Shot good. Pup gives us better odds of finding Vi. Pup can also survive MF's bullets. I think it's Pup. I mean, Moonsaver can do something because it can convert a, um, a spell mana into a unit mana. Well, not here. Damn, I should have banked one mana. I should have believed. Let's get it back to two cost. I mean, you can swing. You can swing, right? It's a good chunk of damage. I like keeping Pegasus Gate mana open, to be honest. Wouldn't 
7 mana for 4 mana. This does not feel good. Why are these not swinging? What can I what am I supposed to do at 1 mana? Interesting. That's actually good for me because this gives um, this gives me the opportunity to buff Vi to five attack, which means we kill MF through a sharp side. I feel like it's gonna be Bright Steel Protector though. Well, this is fine. Hey, we might actually bounce back into this game. Three mana sharp sides. Um, we can get zero mana moon silver if we want. Maybe play a serpent. Am I going to worlds? I wish. More pops, I suppose. This is just fodder for Valor right now. I just have to pale. Uh oh. Right into my trap card. I've watched too much Yu Gi Oh! in my life. Bot is kind of dumb here. Imagine two mana ignitions. Oh my yikes. Big oof. This isn't, like, this probably isn't getting a better jump block and it goes back to zero attack, so we might as well block right now. The next turn we play two units, get excited, Poppy. Hell yes. I have no idea if this is good or not. Three mana for two blockers. But I can play two blockers anyway that are better. Oh wait, it's three blockers though with the chompers, but I can get the chompers out at burst speed next turn. Ah. Uh, should be better. Right, I forgot about this. How fine am I with the open attack? Not fine at all, right? Plus no sharp sight. Plus no poppy. Plus no nothing. Yeah, that, that looks good. That that qualifies as nothing. <laughs> I, my opponent could have just played the protector into open attack. Oh, the other pull was better. Eh? 
that to rally. We can't play around it. Sisters, noise. Oh, shower is interesting on these two. I like sisters more, I think. <laughs> Thank goodness I picked sisters. Let's go. But if he pulls the life stairs to the side, it's two blockers though. And with Meteor Shower, we also just remove two attackers. I don't mind trading sisters here, right? Before my opponent goes for some silly barrier stuff. This is such a grind. Reckless Stony here? No, I don't think so. Way too late for killing Stonies. Bit of an early surrender? Well, GG, we take those. <laughs> 